Hey Christy, how's it going? Well, some people seem to have a problem with who you are, even though they don't know anything about you. And I don't have a problem with who you are, because again, I don't know anything about you. I don't know anything about who you are as a person. You could be a really, really fantastic person who does a lot of things to help a lot of people. You know, you could have a heart of gold, but I wouldn't know because I, I don't know anything about you personally. What I have a problem with is the way that you argue um, feminism. You seem to only be able to discuss things using the same phrases and terminology that you learned them in. And when people don't like word things just the right way, you know, you treat them like they're stupid about the subject. You treat them like they don't know anything about the subject. And the reason why this is frustrating is, um, I'll give an example that I... I believe I gave in an older video, but maybe I didn't actually release that video, I'm not sure. Okay, let's say there's one person who has, uh, let's, let's say there's a piece of technology, there's, there's some sort of a 10 year old technology, and two people for two months have read the user manual and other supplementary information about this piece of technology. They have studied it day and night. They know it like the they know it like the back of their hand. They know how everything was worded, everything was phrased. They can you could you could mention something and they'll be able to tell you what page. Right? Let's say it's a really thick manual, right? They could tell you what page. Okay. When those two people have a conversation about it, they're not debating really anything. They're just sort of going on about the, uh, you know, what things stood out for them the most in that manual and, and the supplementary information, right? It's, it's just really like, well, you know, I remember this part the most and I remember this part the most. And they'd be able to, you know, list it exactly. Both of them can tell you page numbers and all that stuff, right? And now there's another person that comes into, into place who has never read the manual, but has diligently worked with this technology for 10 years, has worked with it since it first came out. And they may even have worked with it professionally. I mean, they really know this thing really well. And now that person is going to get, have, get in a conversation with these other two who only know about it via the manuals. Um, what do you think is going to happen? Well, it would depend on the attitudes of everyone involved. If the two people who know it by the just the manuals and have never actually worked with it in, in, in real life, um, if they have this attitude like, well, they're right all the time, and, you know, oh, you know, this, this person who's worked with it for so long, well, they just don't have it right because it's not, it's, it's, it, that's not the way it is according to the manual. You know, the person who actually worked with things for real, you know, might, might have a whole bunch of insight that goes completely against the manual. So, it, depending on the attitude of the people who know the manual front to back, um, you know, the conversation could go really, really bad or it could go halfway decent and to me Christy the way that you argue is someone who you care more about the way that it's worded and you care more about just people talking about this stuff the proper way than whether they actually understand uh, the concepts See, to me, the concepts are the most important thing. The way that you word it doesn't make any, shouldn't make any difference. It, it makes no sense to me to, to go after someone for not wording it the right way. The most important thing is that they understand what you mean. 
And, you know, there are, there are several words that I bet that you're not able to, to have a conversation about this stuff without using these words. These words are patriarchy, misogyny, sexism, rape culture, toxic masculinity, and finally, privilege. It would be interesting, Christy, to see you have a discussion about this stuff with anyone without using any of those words or phrases. You know, work around them. Say things in some way that does not represent what you would find uh, in a, some sort of scholarly article. You know. Can you do that? Can you word things outside of, of, of those methods? Or are you one of the people who just, you don't know how to uh, retranslate in, in, in what you've learned into something other than the exact way you learned it? Now, you know, this is judge, what I'm about to say is very judgmental of me. Because I know that I, I, I struggle with the, the exact wording on things. I struggle with that type of thing, but I get to know something very, very, very well. Um, I mean, it's just like music theory. Um, there are people that know music theory. They, they know all the terms, all of them. But ask that person to work with other musicians or ask that person to write a song that isn't just some exact pattern that they learned out of one of these things. Well, I, I, well that's, this is a do-do-do-do-do song and everything follows the exact patterns. There are no rules being broken. There are, and there, there's nothing at all interesting at all about what they've, what they've made, right? It's just, oh, well, I made a song using this and this and this and this theory. Well, there's, where's the creativity in it? Well, it's not there. Then there are, you know, the people who just don't have it at all. Not all of the, the, the learning of this theory in the world is going to, is going to help. And in some ways, I think um, going too far into music theory can sort of stop someone from being creative about it stop someone from getting a deeper understanding of music um it, that might seem kind of weird but labels labels can only get us so far and then of course with music there's the emotional uh uh part about the whole thing so, I mean, maybe music isn't necessarily the best example, but if you can, like if someone asks, uh, uh, if someone were to ask someone who has studied music for a long time, uh, you know, oh, well, what type of song is this? Is, is you know, uh, uh, Someone mentions some particular artist in a particular song. I've heard about this song, you know. What, what's, uh, what does this song kind of feel like? And the person who knows music theory like crazy, um, and they know all the right labels, they'll explain, well, it's uh, using a Mixolydian scale, and it's, it's a 1-4-5 it's a progression, and it's... Uh, uh, it uses a four-four time signature, and the other, per the other person who doesn't know anything about theory is just going, "Well, come on, give me something." Well, you know, you should know this. You, you need to get educated about this stuff. I can I can teach you what these things mean, but probably right not right now. Um, you know, we can we can set up maybe a time and date, uh, and and I can show you what some of these terms mean. But it would be better if you went and read this book by L. S. Benjamin right it's like all the person wanted to know was what the song feels like you know so you, you, i mean you know and, and i would come along i know some theory 
But I would come along, and I know this person doesn't know theory, so I'd say something like, well, the song is, uh, the song has a very upbeat and kind of happy feel during the main parts of it. And then, um, during other parts of it, it has, it switches back and forth between being really happy sounding and being very melancholy and sad. And, uh... But the beat is always rather upbeat, no matter what. And um, uh, the singing style is, you know, it, I, I would describe whatever. It's more of a a, a ballad, of, oh, you know, versus, uh, eh, you know, I, I describe that type of thing. Um, you know, and then that person actually understands what kind of song it is. But if, if you're so hell-bent on this, well, it's using a scale, and it's using a, it's this type of progression, and it's uh, using the rhythm method, or whatever, um, you're not going to get anyone to understand unless they've already studied this stuff. And if your whole thing in talking about feminism is all about wording things in ways that people are already studied then you don't want to you don't want to teach anyone you don't actually want to teach anyone anything and you're not the type of person to my knowledge that's going to pull someone aside and say hey let's let, let me teach you about some of these terms no you're going to say you need to get educated and you're going to treat them in a condescending way because they don't know about these things. You know, I've known when it comes to music, I've known a number of people who who have that condescending attitude towards people who don't know all the music theory. And if you get one of the terms wrong, well, now you get to you, you get to hear this long spiel about people who don't know anything about music, which it's 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 sad. Um. I mean, the thing that I think is sad when it comes to music is, is you know, the, the people's appreciation of music is when they they can't appreciate anything that's slightly different than what they've normally heard. You know, they just they're just not open to anything else than this these certain standards. You know, and then that kind of disappoints me because it, it's there. There's so many things that music can be right. So. You know, that's the only time for me. But getting after someone for not knowing some term and not certain terms, for not knowing the language of something. See, one of the problems with those words that I mentioned, patriarchy, misogyny, sexism, rape culture, toxic masculinity, and privilege, is that when the people who consider themselves anti-feminists hear this stuff, they hear any of those words, they're immediately not going to listen. It, it's done. I mean, the, the, the conversation is basically done as soon as you've said that. And you can say, well, that's their problem. Well, no, it's actually your problem. Because if you can see that this is the way that they respond every time you say one of those words, and you want to convey something to them, it's time to not use those words. You know, I'm going to go back to a musician kind of... Uh, of uh, example again um you know i've been in bands i've been in a number of bands but i've been in some bands where there's a point where they're just like we don't feel like we're writing anything that fresh and i'll take what it what all the stuff that they've written already and say okay don't use these chords don't use the open and never ever use the open e and avoid using uh uh, so many fifths, right? Just just something like that. Just that by itself completely changes the way they write a song. You know, you can just say, well, don't do these things, don't use these things, and you come up with something quite different. Now, maybe, Christy, maybe you can come up with arguments without using these words that I mentioned, but I think for the most part, Again, you're not really interested in having a conversation. You're just interested in being condescending to people for not being as studied as you. Which, I mean, it's hard to like that. It's hard to, you know, to, ha to have any 
that that kind of removes any sort of likability factor to anyone who isn't some sort of a a uh, an education snob okay the point to me should be to get people to understand these concepts and you're not going to get there when you're just being condescending so